that David says my cup runneth over. In other words, he ain't just good, but God is overflowing good. He don't just give me what I need, but he gives me more than what I need. So much so that my cup starts to run over. I got enough in the saucer that I can just sip from the saucer because my cup continues to run over. What David is showing us here is what Malachi said a long time ago. When Malachi told the children of Israel that God said, prove me and put me to the test and see when I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. If you just keep your hand in God's hand and if you just keep your eyes on the prize, the shepherd knows how to give you more than you can handle. It's a humbling experience because you know I didn't work this hard. You know I wasn't as smart to get it, but it's because the shepherd has filled my cup to overflowing status. David said it like this in Psalm 37 and verse number 25. He said, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed pick and pray. Even my children's children are going to eat because the Lord is my shepherd. And then finally, oh yes, we got to bring it to a conclusion, boy. Otherwise, I'll get happy and be here past dinner time. We got to bring it down to a conclusion. In conclusion, baby shows that the Lord not only is his possessor, he shows us not only is the Lord my provider, not only is the Lord my protector and my preserver, but the Lord is my proprietor. Oh yes, he is. See, a proprietor is the owner of the house. And David closes out this song with the utmost of joy because he says he's going to dwell in God's house forever and ever. There was no uncertainty about the blessing that God had bestowed upon David. There was no misunderstandings about how David was going to get to God's house forever. He had some good company with him all the days of his life. He called one of them goodness and the other one mercy. He said they shall follow me all the days of my life. They're going to keep me on this path of righteousness. They're going to lead me beside these still waters. They're going to help me keep my soul restored. They're going to continue to fill my cup when it starts to get lower. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. I can go on and walk where I need to walk. I can go on and do what needs to be done. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. I can go on what needs to be said. I can go on and fight the battle that needs to be fought. I can go on and cross the river that needs to be crossed. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I can go on and look over the hilltop. I can go on and run this old Christian race. I can go on and say hallelujah anyhow. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell and not to worry about staying down here. David said I will dwell and not to worry about trying to build me a mansion. David said I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I know something about that house. It got to be the same house that Jesus said. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself. That way I am there, you may be also. If I keep my hand in my shepherd's hand, if I keep my feet falling behind my shepherd's feet, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And when
when I exit this life, surely that would be enough. I don't need a Mercedes. I don't need a big house on the hill. I don't need to shop at Neiman Marcus. I don't have to eat lobster and steak every day. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall, I shall not walk. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. Yes. He's more than enough. More. Yes. More than enough. Yes. For what we need to make it in this life. Yes. If you find yourself in a position of want, yes. chances are the Lord is not your shepherd. Yes. Because when the Lord is your shepherd, you will have everything that you need. Yes. There is a difference between knowing the shepherd and knowing about the shepherd. Amen. Up in here. If the truth be told today, and it will, some of us have become content, have become content in just knowing about the shepherd. We have yet to come to the status of actually knowing the shepherd. Because when you know it, it regulates your behavior. When you know it, you don't talk to folk in any kind of way. When you know him, you know how to behave at work. Hello in here. When you know him, when you know him, son. When you know him, it, it causes you to behave as his sheep. You ever seen an unruly sheep? Hello in here. You ever seen a fella leading a sheep by a leash and the sheep just bucking against him? Sheep don't do that. No. That gentle nature. Yes. yes. Very calm and serene. So much so that when the Lord, when Isaiah prophesied about the Lord going to his pending death, he said he was as a sheep yes. laid to the slaughter. Right, sir. He don't put up no fight. That's right. He don't cause no ruckus. Right. He goes willingly yes. and peacefully. Yes. Holds his neck up. So the shearer can slice his throat. You follow what I'm saying? He's a very peaceful animal. How can the Lord look down at your wife and say that you are one of his sheep? Or are you running around here like a wild mountain goat? Amen. Up in here. Goats have a significant different behavior from the sheep. A goat will run up and bump you on your backside for no apparent reason no whatsoever. Reason. That's right. Just because you're there, yes. he will charge and run up into you. He's a mean rascal. Is that you? Yes. <laughs> Sheep, even in their calmness, have such a sweet side. <laughs> oh go just grunt. <laughs> Hello up in here. Tomorrow morning, you gonna be a sheep, you gonna be a goat. Don't go over in the work grunt. You don't even go in that bag. Good morning. Yeah. This is the day. That the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hello, over here. I thought you were going to go up in that crumb. Don't deal with Don't bother me. I'm tired. I had a long weekend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There is a significant difference between the behavior of the sheep and the behavior of the goats. Which is why in Matthew 25, the Lord describes the judgment as the separating. Yes. Between the sheep and, and the goats. You got that now? Yeah. The goats go on the left hand because that's a dishonorable position. The sheep go on the right hand because that is a position of honor and authority. Y'all see that? Yes. Now you got to make up in your mind what you're going to be today. You're going to be a sheep or you're going to be a goat. And the reason why, in that analogy, the Lord says the shepherd has to divide. The sheep from the goat because sometimes as they're grazing, yes. some goats get intermingled with the sheep. Yes. But when it's time for the shepherd to get his and go, sometimes at